Viagra is the trade name of the world's most famous blue pill, produced by the American pharmaceutical company Pfizer and mainly used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction. To trace the history of Viagra, we need to go back to 1986 in the United Kingdom, when in a Pfizer laboratory, a group of scientists was looking for new drugs against angina pectoris, pathology that manifests itself with chest pain and a feeling of oppression and constriction due to poor blood flow in the coronary arteries. A new drug was discovered, initially named UK-92480, which was supposed to dilate the blood vessels of the heart. Experiments on humans began, but the result was rather disappointing from the point of view of the therapeutic effects on angina. However, more frequent than normal erections were recorded in the volunteer group. The blood vessels had therefore actually dilated, but not those of the heart. The new drug was working, but in another part of the body. Thus began years of experimentation, which ended definitively when on March 27, 1998, the Food and Drug Administration approved the use of Viagra for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. But how does the blue pill that revolutionized the sexuality of millions of men around the world work? To understand this, we must start briefly from the anatomy of the male reproductive organ and the physiology of the erection. Penis Anatomy The penis, the male reproductive organ and final tract of the urinary tract, is made up of three cylindrical bodies of erectile tissue, the two corpora cavernosa of the penis and the corpus cavernosum or spongiosum of the urethra. The corpora cavernosa are located on either side of the axis of the male reproductive organ and extend from the pubic bones to the head of the penis where they join. These two cylindrical masses are made of spongy tissue containing blood-filled vascular spaces, lined in turn by endothelial tissue and separated by connective tissue septa. The corpus cavernosum, or spongiosum of the urethra on the other hand, is a smaller cylindrical structure and always made of erectile tissue that surrounds the urethra along its entire length until it forms the glands in the terminal part. Physiology of the erection when the panis is flaccid, there is a small amount of blood in the vascular spaces, just what is necessary to supply and nourish the cells of the erectile tissue. Following an excitatory stimulus, the arterial blood flow increases to the corpora cavernosa of the panis, which progressively tend to swell, and by compressing the veins they prevent the venous return of blood. Blood inflow increases 40-fold compared to normal conditions, where 90% is retained by the corpora cavernosa and the remaining 10% by the corpus spongiosum. In the case of erectile dysfunction, the subject is unable to have or maintain an erection sufficient to allow intercourse, despite having a good sexual desire. Generally, erectile dysfunction is caused by a reduced blood flow to the corpora cavernosa or by its early emptying, which thus prevent correct vascularization of the penis and therefore an erection. It's here that Viagra comes to the rescue. What is Viagra and how does it work? In case of sexual stimulus, the body produces a substance known as cyclic guanosine monophosphate, which by promoting the flow of blood to the penis causes an erection. The higher the concentration of this substance, the greater the extent and duration of the erection, which in turn depend on the production of another substance, phosphodiesterase type 5. Phosphodiesterases are enzymes present in the body in various forms, and to date 11 different types have been identified. Phosphodiesterase type 5 is an enzyme present in the smooth muscle of the cavernous bodies of the penis and is responsible for removing cyclic guanosine monophosphate and therefore suspending the erection. However, when high levels of type 5 phosphodiesterase are present in the body, the levels of guanosine monophosphate are consequently reduced and therefore, even in the event of sexual stimulation, it is not possible to have or maintain an adequate erection. It's here that Viagra intervenes, whose active principle is sildenafil citrate, the real heart of the drug. It belongs to the class of medicines called type 5 phosphodiesterase inhibitors, which as the name suggests, block this enzyme and help maintain a high concentration of guanosine monophosphate, thus promoting an erection. 
Sildenafil actually inhibits phosphodiesterase type 5, relaxing the blood vessels in the penis and promoting blood flow into its corpora cavernosa. Thanks to this drug, the relaxation of the smooth muscle cells of the penis is amplified, ensuring a more rigid and long-lasting erection. Contrary to what many think, Viagra does not directly induce an erection, but enhances and optimizes its physiological mechanism in the presence of an excitatory stimulus. For this reason, sildenafil is effective only in the case of erectile dysfunction of non-anatomical origin and in subjects who have a non-compromised libido. Dosages, Duration and Side Effects of Viagra Viagra is one of the so-called love pills and comes in the form of rhomboid-shaped tablets with rounded and blue tips. It is available in three different dosages, 25 mg, 50 mg, and 100 mg. The drug is taken orally, and the time it takes to take effect after intake varies from person to person, but generally ranges from half an hour to an hour. However, Viagra is not only blue in color. Among the possible side effects of the tablet, there is a particularly rare one that causes a very intense blue vision, together with the inability to perceive red and green. It is referred to by the medical term cyanopsia and is caused by the inhibition of phosphodiesterase 6, which causes the rods of the eyes to become more sensitive. All objects appear colored blue, but this is a transient effect that usually disappears after 3 to 5 hours. Other more common side effects associated with the use of the drug include headache, dizziness, and facial flushing. Alternatives to Viagra after sildenafil, other phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors were introduced, such as avanafil, marketed under the names of Spedra or Stendra, Vardenafil, also known as Levitra or Vivanza, and finally Tadalafil, better known as Cialis. The mechanism of action is the same, but the speed of action and duration of therapeutic effect is different. As regards the duration of the effects, we find Tadalafil in first place, whose therapeutic effect exceeds 36 hours, so much so that it has earned the nickname of Weekend Pill. This does not mean that the erection lasts 36 hours, but that the effects of the drug can last up to 36 hours, thus leaving more choice on the best time to have sexual intercourse. The drug will help to achieve an erection if there is adequate sexual stimulation during the period of action of the drug. Vardenafil and Sildenafil, on the other hand, have a duration ranging from 4 to 6 hours, while Avanafil approximately 12 hours. However, the effect of the drugs just mentioned varies from person to person and is influenced by the intake of food and alcoholic beverages. Phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors are effectively the most common treatment for erectile dysfunction. Before starting any drug therapy, however, it is recommended to consult your doctor or an andrologist in order to first investigate the triggering cause of erectile dysfunction and then to choose the most suitable pill for you. Be careful when buying these medicines online because they are often counterfeit products. Following some tests, it was discovered that some Viagra pills for sale on the web contained only a small percentage of the active ingredient. In other cases, instead, they presented an overdose compared to what was declared, or even worse traces of toxic substances were found, such as pesticides, paint, and printer ink residues, 